This video is for families of new puppy owners in helping the puppies to transition with your new family in the first few weeks of their life with you. We hope you enjoy what we have put together for you. Thanks for watching. This segment is mainly going to go over transporting your new puppy. Um, that could be anywhere from your house to the vet um, or for when you pick up the puppy uh, traveling home. Some people travel from us to multiple states um, or even if you're having your puppy shipped, picking the puppy up from the airport and taking your puppy home. Um, all of these safety guidelines are you know, wonderful to, you know, look over and make notes on and just kind of try and remember when when you're you know picking up your new puppy I know you're going to be super excited but a lot of these things are, are big safety concerns to remember and, and already have the supplies and materials in place to have your puppy have a safe trip home um, or to the vet's office with you. So when you pick family. up your new puppy um, if it's from the airport it will already be in a crate and we suggest um, if you want to get that puppy out you know, in the car and say hello to your new puppy or in the airport, that's a wonderful thing to do. We understand you guys are very excited about your new puppies, but please do not put the puppies on the floor either in the airport. Don't take them to the designated potty areas. Um, keep your puppies safe. Don't let them run around in the parking lots or in anywhere. So go ahead and put your puppy uh, back in the crate to take them home. Puppies are safest in a crate. You may want to um, keep some extra newspaper with you in the car or a puppy pad um, just in case that there are those accidents. Um, for those of you picking up your puppy directly from um, us here in Columbus or Reynoldsburg, Ohio, um, we uh, require, we didn't used to require, but we do now require that you actually have a crate to transport your puppy home. Um, you may think that that half hour drive, or for some people that's a lot longer, um, you may think that that short drive, oh, I can hold my puppy, it will be fine. Um, but car accidents do happen and they are very unexpected. So again, we are requiring a crate to take your puppy home. Um, there are multiple pet stores in the area that do sell some wonderful crates, but it's always best to have that crate ready to go when you pick up your puppy. Um, if you need help getting the proper crate or the proper size, we can do that in person or we can send you a link to Chewy.com to order your crate so that you have So it for ready those to of go. you that are uh, traveling a longer distance, maybe across multiple states or even a two or a three hour distance um, to Cleveland or Cincinnati, um, maybe Pennsylvania, a couple of our puppies have gone to those places so far. Um, and again, we thank you very much for uh, making that trip to come pick up your new puppy. Um, so you, I know that a lot of you guys are going to be not only excited to pick up your puppy, which is absolutely wonderful, we love to see that in families, um, but I know that you may want to stop at a rest stop and you think, oh, the puppy might need to go to the bathroom. And, you might need to get out and run around or get exercise. Um, I would really like to caution people and steer them away from doing that um, just because you never know any of the diseases. Again, we've talked about parvo and distemper before. There are other diseases on top of that that you can pick up at a rest stop. Um, and I know that people are very concerned, you know, with some of the, the trips that a couple of our puppy parents have made, even from Columbus, Ohio, down to Houston, Texas, um, that, oh, the puppy is definitely going to pee and poop in the crate on the way. And we would rather the puppy have an accident in the crate than pick up a deadly disease out at one of the rest stop areas. So please keep that in mind um, if you are thinking of stopping at a rest stop anywhere to please just leave your puppy in a crate. It is the safest place for them. The first chapter of our video will focus on crate training with your puppy. As you can see, this is a miniature schnauzer. He's not a puppy, but he's about the size of your poodle puppy when you will be getting your puppy home at eight weeks old. This is an appropriate sized crate for your puppy. Different breeds will need different, appropriately sized crates. Your puppy should be able to easily stand up and not be squished from the front to the back of their bodies. They should be able to easily turn around and lay down. 
If your puppy cannot, you need to figure out a different size crate. Next, we will puppy. talk about some crate games that will help your new puppy get used to being in the crate. We don't suggest leaving your puppy in the crate for any more than how many months old they are. So, for example, if your puppy is two months old, then the puppy should not be left in the crate for more than crate two training hours. is also a great way to help your puppy with their housebreaking skills. Let's talk about a few games that may help your puppy. So here I have a few pieces of chicken that Obi really likes. So we are going to use those, as you would with your puppy, to teach them that the crate means good things. So we're gonna go ahead and toss the food into the crate. Good job. If the puppy stays in the crate, then we're gonna reward them again. Good job. I like to use both a verbal and a food reward. Good job. So at this point in the games, we don't keep the puppy in the crate. We just teach them that they get rewarded for going in the crate and rewarded for staying in the crate. As you can see, I'm not forcing him to be in the crate, but rewarding him for staying in there. The next step in the games with the crate would be to shut the door. Now we don't want to do this for a long period of time because we don't want the puppy to develop a negative association with the crate. Good job. inside the crate. As you can see, on this crate, we have a food bowl attached to the door that helps the puppy to not be able to dump their food and make a mess. It also helps the puppy to associate sleeping and eating behaviors with the crate, so they are less likely to have accidents in the crate. We recommend that every puppy has all of its collars and tags off every time it goes into the crate. This is a big safety concern. If the dog has a collar, tags, chain collar, buckle collar around its neck, even a flea collar, it can easily become caught in the sides of the crate and strangle the puppy. Please remove all collars and things connected to the puppy like harnesses, clothing items, before putting your puppy into their crate. Crate training leads us to our second chapter about potty training. We highly suggest using the crate with your puppy and developing a great schedule for potty training. Puppies need to go outside for about every month that they are old. For example, a three month old puppy needs to go to the potty about every three hours. When they're four months, you can work on extending that to about every four hours. We also have the general rule of thumb for on the floor. When your puppy wakes up or is done with training or is done playing games um, or wakes up from a nap, their feet are on the floor and they need to go to the bathroom. So make sure that even if it's not at that three hour mark to contain any messes and make the puppy successful, that you take them out whenever you feel that they need it. Also make sure while outside that your puppy is monitored at all times for their safety and rewarding your puppy immediately after they are done going to the bathroom is essential in making potty training successful. Good job. Good job. Bye guys. As you can see, proper crate training leads to a puppy that is very happy and comfortable with being in In this crate. section, we're going to talk about your food and water schedule to help make your potty training more successful for your new puppy. So I'm going to go ahead and let Mr. Obi outside to explore. Um, we have this area set up here for the puppies and the adult dogs um, with concrete. Good job, good potty. Good boy. We're going to go ahead and reward him since he did a 
a nice little potty there for us. Um, but we have this set up with patio pavers and a nice secure safe fence in yard locks on our gates. Um, this allows us to be able to sanitize. Good potty, good job. Sanitize any of this area and hose it down and keep it clean um, and free of any other animals outside, um, other dogs, um, mostly other cats and anything else um, like raccoons and groundhogs and such that can bring in other diseases. Um, there is dirt in this area, so again, puppy proofing your area is very, very important. Um, so we put up a little fence and, and the smaller puppies can get through that wire fence so we can put a plastic barrier behind that. That not only keeps them from getting in there and digging and eating dirt, um, but possibly ingesting anything that they shouldn't. Um, always again, be outside with your puppy and monitor them. Um, it, you know, whenever you can, hopefully that's every single time, the whole time that they're out, but I understand not everybody can do that. Um, our food and water schedule that we have the puppies on that seems to be the most successful is food at 7 a.m. and then outside, again, appropriate to their age. Remember, one hour for every month old that they are. Um, then they get water again at noon and then water and dinner at five. And then that allows for any of the poop and the pee from their dinner at the five o'clock time to come out before you go to bed at 10. Um, some puppies are going to need bathroom breaks in the middle of the night until they are finished potty training. Um, but in general, by the time that they're four months old, they are sleeping through the night. So there shouldn't be too many nights that you have to let your puppy out in the middle of the night. Um, we suggest pulling up all food and water um, at that five o'clock time after they had eaten their dinner and had one last drink. That just allows for minimal accidents through the rest of the night. And again, making sure that they are out um, every hour per month of age. So if your puppy you know, comes home to you at eight weeks old, they're two months old, they're gonna need to go out every two hours. Potty training with your puppy, as you saw in the um, the segment that we have here earlier, to reward your puppy as they are going to the bathroom or right after they finish going. Um, if you don't want to interrupt them while they're going to the bathroom, you can do it right afterwards. Um, but always remember to do it in that time frame and not when they're coming in the door. Um, because then you're going to reward them for coming inside, which is fine to do also. But if you only reward when the puppy comes in the house, then what you're doing is you're not uh, rewarding the actual potty behavior, which is what we want to work on. Okay, you can come in. Good job. Good boy. Our third chapter focuses on behind me is an X pen. This is a great way to contain your puppy when you cannot be with them or when you need to have them in the same room but don't have things put up like wires or a trash can or things that they may be able to get into that could be dangerous for the puppy. The X pen that we have chose has a great door on it that opens and closes and has two separate latches. It can also be pulled up and put out of the way when not in use. It will be important, just like with the crate, to teach your puppy to go in and out of the X-Pen so that they have the same positive association with the X-Pen as they do with their crate. Like chew bones, non-rawhide items, 
play bully sticks, nylon bones, or soft squeaky toys. It's always important to monitor your new puppy in the x pen to make sure that the toys you have in there are safe for them. It's important to randomly reward your puppy while in the x pen to also help continue them developing a positive association with the new tool. You want to make sure that you reward through the bars down here so that the puppy isn't tempted to jump up and develop bad habits of jumping on the side of the x pen for the tree. If the puppy does not chew on blankets or towels or things like that, you may want to put a blanket in there for them to rest on and take a nap. Some puppies enjoy that. Some, Some puppies, puppies it actually encourages them to go potty on. So please be mindful with each puppy that they are different and try new things and find what works for you and your puppy. Lastly, it's very important that when taking your puppy from the crate or the x pen to go outside to use the potty, that it is important that you start leash handling skills as early as possible. Putting a leash and collar on your puppy and leading them with treats outside develops a positive association with having the leash and collar on your puppy. It also keeps them from running into other rooms of the house and having an accident on the way outside to use the bath. If you live in a smaller space or apartment where an X-Pen just won't fit, it's very important to use a leash to tether the puppy to you so that they cannot wander away. Or at the very least, use X-Pens in the room where you are so that you can closely monitor the puppy and their behavior and catch any accidents before or as they are happening. If you have not read through any of our policies um, or our contracts for our puppies as well as our deposit form and you are considering one of our puppies, please go to the photo section of our Facebook page at Willow Ridge Standard Poodles and please look at the files um, that are there. I believe they are PDFs that are added to the photo section. Um, they are in their own album as Facebook allows us to add them. Um, if anyone has any questions, they can message us directly and we will help direct you to the link to view those documents. It's very important that you read over all of these and agree to the statements before purchasing a puppy from us um, so that you know what we expect of you as puppy buyers and families um, and what to expect from your new puppy. It goes over things um, like shots that the puppy will have and warmings that we've done uh, with the puppies uh, as well as each parent has their own album that has several photos of them along with their pedigree if they are AKC um, and any health testing that has been done on each one of the parents. The health testing that we do here at Willow Ridge Standard Poodles is very important to us. It helps us to make sure that every puppy that we produce is as healthy as possible and is going to live a nice, long, healthy life with its In this family. next section, we will talk about grooming. Before each of our puppies goes home, we work with them extensively with a groomer every week, if not more, on things like having their feet touched, having their ears messed with for proper cleaning, having their mouths open and examined, and also being brushed and getting used to the clippers and Dremel. It's very important when your new puppy arrives home that you work with him or her on these skills as often as possible. You may not have a grooming table like this, but you can use your kitchen table or a bed or any elevated surface to help put the puppy up on so that you have better access to reach them. It also helps the puppy to not run and jump off of things if you have a grooming noose like one of these here with us. Your puppy is used to being brushed and groomed and bathed when necessary, usually at least on a weekly process. They're used to slicker brushes like this, metal combs like this, and many other things that your groomer may suggest to you to use with your new puppy to keep them properly groomed and mat free. Most poodles 
do well with a slicker or bent angle brush like this one. And this one has a nice rubber grip on it which makes it comfortable for us to use. And it helps to keep the coat free of tangles and mess. Daily brushing is very important to keeping your puppy tangled and mat free. Mats can lead to skin infections, sores, and many other different very uncomfortable and unsafe things for your puppy. So please make sure that you are brushing and grooming them on a daily basis. Health testing does not ensure a perfect puppy, but it does get us closer and closer each generation that we produce that has passed all of their health testing. I'm going to talk a little bit before we go about proper toys and bones for your bones that you want to keep them occupied. So you see here we have an assortment of toys and I apologize for the mud but it has been super rainy here so uh, mud is just a thing that happens when it rains, um, especially with poodles. Keeping their feet trimmed really helps with that, um, but not all of them have to have their feet trimmed yet. They weren't really coming soon. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about the toys um, and different things to keep your puppies occupied. Um, Obi here is chewing on a fish skin. Um, it's very nutritious, easily digestible. Um, things we do not suggest for dogs to play with um, are things like tennis balls. They can easily ingest the fur, which can be harmful to their digestive tract. Um, no raw hides whatsoever. Um, they can, you know, ingest those. Even in small quantities, they can um, you know, expand in the intestinal tract and it can cause an impaction, which can be deadly to any puppy or dog. Um, even adults. So we do not suggest raw hides of any type whatsoever. Um, we don't suggest greenies either. Um, they're like a dental chew. Um, even if they don't cause diarrhea, they can still cause impaction. Um, ever stick one in a big glass of water and uh, you'll see very quickly that it becomes slimy. And uh, the different things that it does in adults are definitely attractive. Just do not suggest it at all. The other thing we don't suggest are any plush toys or things that dogs can rip up very easily. Um, those can also be pieces of fur swallowed and be harmful for the puppies. Um, and lastly, cooked bones. Uh, anything raw is great for puppies. Bones that you want, different things like that. You freeze them, they last longer. But any of the cooked bones splinter very easily and can become very harmful very quickly adults or puppies. Um, so we do not suggest any cooked bones whatsoever. Um, soup bones like you see on the left, um, they have already eaten out all the marrow from those and you can just get those at your butcher. Um, next in line there we have um, a moose antler. Um, I get those direct from um, a elk and moose farm in Pennsylvania. Um, if you would like the link to that, I can get that for you. I think the gentleman Maybe it's John Vassala, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, next is a deer antler, um, also which you can get from him. Um, and then just a nylobone type bone is next there in line. I don't remember the company that makes that, but that little holes in it where you can smear peanut butter um, to entice the dogs. But those seem to be pretty durable. Um, an elk antler is a split in half. Um, I also got that from John. Um, chuck it balls. We've had some of our chuck it balls for five years um, and they're still going strong. So, in place of a tennis ball, a chuck it ball is great. I um, don't know if you can see behind the calm. Um, there is a uh, water buffalo horn, um, and those are great. Um, we do not suggest uh, pig or cow hooves, they splinter very easily, but these water buffalo extremely durable and do not splinter at all. Um, and then we have another type of bone uh, made by Bena bone, B-E-N-E-B-O-N-E. -E -E. Uh, great, great company, absolutely wonderful, love their products. 
suggest any of the puppy chew nylons on. They can be very dangerous and going for it. Um, then we have the yak chew. Um, and then lastly, as Toby finishes his uh, fish skin, uh, we have another type of very durable nylon bone chew. Um, so again, make sure that your house is puppy proof and any wires or things are out of the way and that you have appropriate safe toys for your new puppy to play with, um, either in their crate or their ex pen. Very important information um, that was not discussed in any of the other segments is veterinary care and visits um, to the veterinarian as well as visits out in public. Um, we do not suggest taking your puppy out in public anywhere that is unnecessary until all of their vaccinations have been finished by your veterinarian. That's usually anywhere between 14 and 16 weeks of age. And we wanna remind people that um, parvo and distemper are very prevalent um, all year round and they're very difficult to kill diseases. You can bring them in on your shoes uh, from just going to the pet store or maybe taking an older dog in your home or a neighbor's dog to the dog park and then coming home. So please read up on these diseases and be very aware of how they can affect We you. highly suggest taking your puppy to the vet in a crate um, and never, ever, ever putting that puppy on the floor. Um, go the extra mile and ask that all surfaces that your puppy is gonna touch, including any countertops or exam tables or any of the um, little scales that they're gonna weigh your new puppy on, that they are completely sanitized um, with a bleach or a parvo killing solution. Um, you can make sure to mop your homes regularly as a third or stronger percentage bleach solution is one of the only things that kills parvo. Um, no amount of heat or cold is going to cause parvo to die. It will go for, uh, dormant, but it will not actually kill the disease. Um, so please be aware of this when you're looking at taking your puppy out in public or to your vet's office for the vet visits and things like that. Keep your puppy off the floor and have all surfaces sanitized. Um, I know here at the home that we always take off our shoes out front and we also have a bleach bucket for anybody um, who may be uh, maintenance in the home, um, a cable guy, electrician, things like that who are required to wear their shoes. Um, we have them step in the bleach bucket which has towels and it's uh, full of an actual 50% bleach solution. Um, and that is another huge reason why we do not allow people to come to our home um, to visit the puppies. It's just too high of traffic and too high of a risk. Um, so I really appreciate all of the families that understand this and have been very accommodating to do our video chat sessions um, and live videos uh, through Facebook with the puppies so that they can be able to still um, have some connection and interaction with their new puppy um, while keeping everyone safe. Lastly, we want to recommend that all puppies start basic obedience courses or classes with you and your family at no later than 16 weeks of age. This helps to prevent any further problems down the road with your puppy jumping, nipping, biting, running out the front door, Thanks or again for like watching, that. and we hope that you have found this video to be helpful to you and your new family while adjusting to the life of your new puppy in your home.